music I make a ton of music I'm doing this long a day challenge the goal is to make a long a day until the end of the year but then we're on day 130 something I release seven songs every Friday every Friday seven songs so follow along every Friday there's a new pack um, follow along and see if I make it if I manage to complete the challenge I really appreciate if you listen to the music and let me know what you think that mean a lot yeah Okay, 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 we're back, we're back. We're back with uh, some more Bible reading. We, we read chapter, Samuel chapter 14, 1 Samuel chapter 14. Uh, last time we, we, we read. And hold on. Decided to switch locations. Um, What was I saying? Like... Chapter 14, we read. It's getting saucy, man. It's getting saucy. Everyone's been misbehaving. There's been war. Um, Jonathan, Saul's son, King Saul's son, rescued the Israelites out of a very desperate situation through faith, through an act of faith that just saved them from sure destruction. Um... So, everyone cel celebrated the homie, and they kind of looked at Saul like, bro, you, you need to do better. Your son is, is a way more faithful man than you are, and you're kind of an idiot too, so please just be a better king. Anyway, um, if you want to catch up on that and, and see what's going on there, um, check, out, check out the previous video, the video before the last one. Uh, yeah, and then you can, you can catch up. So this is chapter 15. It's titled, The Lord Rejects Saul as King. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message of the, from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Hold on, I need a... We have a uh, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I'll punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Very interesting. I was reading about this, right? So God doesn't forget. Um, and you know, with humans, when someone does something bad to us, whatever it may be, time, you know what they say, time heals all wounds. You, you can almost forget, right? You can get over it. Over time. Time can heal almost... Pretty much, can you pretty much anyone, even like the deepest of transgressions, given enough time, people, they move on. But with God, he, he remembers. And time is not a, it's not something that can erase sin. So with the Amalekites, they have a history of beef with the Israelites. They, when the Israelites, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, and they were freed by Moses, through God, out of Egypt. But they were weak and vulnerable, right? Because now they're out of Egypt. They just escaped slavery and they're in the desert. Yada, yada, they don't know where to go. And while they were vulnerable, they got attacked by the Amalekites. So they were weak, they were vulnerable, and they got attacked, vicious attacks. 
and it was unnecessary. These were people like those former slaves. They didn't have anything. They were they were just trying to find a home, and they got attacked by these bloodthirsty um, Amalekites. So God, this is like four hundred years ago from this point. So God was like, I'm gonna remember this. I'm gonna punish you one day. I'm gonna punish you. Um, so uh, it says, what what does it say here? I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they come up. Uh, so the 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 translation for the word punish, and I guess in Hebrew, the, he says utterly destroy. So when he says I'm gonna punish them. He means it's gonna be lit. Gonna get revenge, like godly vengeance. It's different from like uh, John Wick. You killed my dog. I'm gonna get revenge on all of you. You know that. It's like this is this is the Lord's vengeance. It's different. It's a different. It's a different breed. And he's he's, had, he's held this grudge for 400 years. So now he's finally like. It's time. So what did he say? He says, Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So he's like, wipe them all out. And not dark, you know, children and infants. <sighs> that's the that's the not so pretty side of God that people kind of ignore sometimes. Because you know, I feel like Christianity as a religion sometimes gets perceived as, as soft because I think over time Christians became very fickle and like um, they, they, they don't take themselves seriously, they don't take the world seriously and we, we, we tend to lean into the more compassionate, lovey-dovey teddy bear side of God <laughs> it's also a side of God that's like put to death women and children and, and, and infants like wipe them out they did this terrible thing and I'm going to get my revenge but it wasn't a small thing they did though you have to understand the history of the Amalekites and the terrible things they did to the Israelites and he gave listen he gave them 400 years to repent to, to change till this day till up, up until this point the Amalekites were still persecuting Israelites they, they had 400 years to turn away from the wicked ways and they refused. So he's like, no, I'm wiping them out. I'm, I'm blotting them out of existence. So he's, even the camels and donkeys, everyone's catching smoke. Right? Even the donkeys are catching smoke. It's crazy. Um, so Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Tel Aim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. So he went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, Go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Just a quick note. Um, something interesting to note is, you know, in, 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 um, in previous instances, like sort of the story, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, wicked cities, they were a terrible thing. I remember he, he sent an angel, a, a pair of angels, down to one of those cities to meet with this man. Uh, I forgot what they were trying to do, but basically this man was with them angels, and the people in that city tried to rape him and the angels. So God was like, "This is crazy," and he destroyed <laughs> he destroyed the city. Because it was just it was just a mess. It was crazy. Um, so it's like, okay, why doesn't he destroy the uh, what do you call it, the Amalekites in the same way he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, the Amalekites they, they performed military action against the Israelites. So I think he wants to return the favor through Saul. He's also trying to test Saul. To see if Saul will carry out his directive of wiping these people out. Like, wipe them out, bro. Like, spare no one. Spare not even one. So, we'll see if, um, if the homie obeys. Okay, so, he spares the Canites. He's like, y'all in this region, but you can dip. He, 
you don't have any beef with y'all and you were kind to us when we were coming out of Egypt so you know get out of here yeah. oh, thank you and then he did so that was mercy then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur to the east of Egypt he took Adal king of the Amalekites alive and all these people he totally destroyed with the sword but Saul and the army spared Adal and the best of the sheep and cattle the fat calves and lambs everything that was good these they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. This guy, man, this guy, he, he can't help himself. He just can't follow instructions. He was told, destroy everything, everything and everyone, like lay it all a waste, like leave nothing. Saul didn't listen. He spared the king. Kill the king, at least. Kill the king. He spared the king, and then he spared the, the livestock and everything that was good. Because that, that's just greed at that point. And it shows just a lack of faith, man. It's like you're, you're sparing the, the sheep and the cattle. Like, like God can give you all that. Why? Just kill them. Get rid of them. Like destroy everything. This guy doesn't listen. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my, my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. So at this point, I think God's just tired of being disobeyed and rejected and not taken seriously. And, and I think that's the more personal side, the more relatable side, where it generally, it, it, he says, he uses the words, um, I am grieved. That I have made Saul king. Like it hurts. First of all, he only made Saul king because the Israelites rejected him. These were his chosen people. They were like, fuck you, give us a human king. So that hurts. And then you make the guy king, right? And you bless him and you you try your best to establish him as a good king. Even though people rejected you and they made you put this bozo in charge instead you try your best to make this bozo a good king and you bless him and you give him as much as you can and he still spits in your face time and time on all time and time again right so he's, he's just like this guy man so he's grieved he's, he's like well, i can't believe i made this guy king man but it's also like obviously he knew what he was doing but it's, it still hurts it still hurts so i think i samuel's law is just kind of like feeling that as well he says he cries he cried out to the lord all all that night tragic tragic stuff so early in the morning samuel got up and went to meet saul but he was told saul has gone to carmel there he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone gone on down to gilgal so this guy man so this guy basically made us he set up a statue for himself saul made a statue for him i'm so great we be destroy the Amalekites. He probably spared the king. Maybe out of pity, maybe, but it could also be like a trophy thing, like as a as a way to to remind himself of his victory and for other people to be reminded of his victory. Kind of like look at this king. This this um shamed king. We stripped him of his honor. He's our prisoner. Yada yada yada. So maybe that's why he did it. And now he set up a monument for himself. So you can, you can see his heart. It's not in the right place. And he has very grand ideas about himself. But he's not realizing that it's God who made him king. It's God who who gave him all this, all this strength and power. And he's forgotten all that. He's, he's gotten so arrogant. So when Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. No, you haven't bitch but samuel said what then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears what is this lowing of cattle that i hear so answered the soldiers brought them from the amalekites they spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the lord your god cap cap but we totally destroyed the rest um quick note usually when in war um when an army goes and 
attacks a city or whatever and they destroy everything when they plunder the, the soldiers plunder everything they take all the livestock and jewelry and money whatnot. that's typically their payment that's how the soldiers get paid when they plunder everything at least back back in the ancient days that plundering for the soldiers is essentially payment but in this case god was exacting divine judgment so he's like saying this is not one of those kill and plunder situations destroy everything this is judgment it's a very somber moment i'm not happy to do this i don't like doing this but it must be done don't take a single thing wipe it all out i'm trying to make an example of these people it's a grave sin what he did it's a very grave sin and and god is just like as a leader when when you when your followers are disrespecting you like this like it hurts <laughs> it hurts man it has to hurt um so he's just like fuck man these guys they don't listen and samuel as as, as god's prophet who's he's very close to god he, he feels it too it hurts him as well so so samuel's pissed so he's he's like oh, oh. You did what he did. You, you did what you asked to do. So why am I hearing all these sheep bleeding and these cows doing? It says lowing. What what the hell is lowing? All I know is moo moo. Anyway, so Samuel's pissed. So 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 Saul says, yeah yeah yeah. We spared the sheep to to, to sacrifice to to God. Cap lies, but we totally destroyed the rest. Stop, Samuel says to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? That's deep. Even in his own eyes, this guy was a bomb. He was, he, he was from the least of the tribes of Benjamin. Or something like that. But now he's making monuments for himself all of a sudden, forgetting that it was God who established him. Um... The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission, saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make war on them until you have wiped them out. By the way, um, I think it was mentioned in, in the original text, in the original Hebrew script, it was mentioned like seven times to completely destroy these people. Like It was stressed, like destroy them completely wipe them out leave nothing behind he didn't obey why did you not obey the lord why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the lord but i did obey the lord Saul said i went on the mission the lord assigned me i completely destroyed the amalekites and brought back agag their king the soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder the best of others devoted to god in order to sacrifice them to your lord god at gilgal but Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. What a speech! What a speech from Samuel. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obedience? Damn. Rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Goddamn helicopters, man. Helicopter, helicopter. And I don't know who sold things he's kidding. Oh, I spared these cattle and sheep to sacrifice to the Lord. You didn't give a fuck about the lord he doesn't, he doesn't care but he spared it because they were like he didn't want to waste them he saw all these beautiful animals and all the meat and wool and just animal products he could squeeze from them and he was like we're not letting these go to waste imagine seeing a fat cow and just throwing it away he's like no we're not doing that it's, it, it's currency back then it was currency man you could do a lot of with a, with a healthy cow a healthy sheep and you've got and, and you've got a city's worth of them. This guy was greedy, man. He wasn't... He's lying. He, he didn't plan on sacrificing that shit. He was going to have feasts 
and all sorts of produce was going to be used, made from these animals. So they were just arrogant, man. Arrogant and greedy and disobedient. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people and so I gave in to them. The people? This guy is so disingenuous. Why are you blaming the people? You gave in to yourself. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. <laughs> but Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Mm, mm, mm. Damn. Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. <laughs> Saul, Saul, Saul. What's the what's the quote? Saul, 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 something, something. Ah, I don't know. But yeah, this, this guy's a mess, bro. Then Samuel said, Bring me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him confidently, thinking, Surely the, bit, the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among, among women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gilgal. <laughs> Samuel's a gangster, bro. He's like, I'm going to finish the job. Uh, just additionally, um, with Samuel killing Agag, I'm reading some commentary here. And it says, notably, Samuel did it before the Lord. This was not before Saul to show him how weak and proud he was. This was not before Israel to show them how strong and tough Samuel was. This was before the Lord in tough obedience to the Lord God. The seed must have been shockingly violent. The stomachs of those watching must have turned. Yet Samuel did it all before the Lord. Mm. It was. <laughs> it says that he, he he hacked Agag in pieces. Samuel is a priest. He's used to offering sacrifices. He's used to cutting animals up. He knows what it's like for a blade to pierce flesh. But I think before this point, he'd never killed a man. That's different, obviously. I think this is the first time killing a person. But he did it without hesitation. He did it obediently. And it was probably the most gruesome scene you can imagine. There were onlookers. There were people watching. Saul probably watched. And there were a lot of the elders that probably watched. And it was probably a very gruesome scene. Imagine watching a man hack another man to pieces. Just cutting him. Hacking his limbs off. It's just bloody, fam. Like, just... Going to a town. Damn. Violent. <laughs> Completely violent. But I think, you know, and again, the Bible isn't cute. And God isn't cute. I think that's the thing people don't realize. Because on the one side, you have the people that don't believe in God. But they say, like, if he was, he'd be evil because look at all the pain and suffering in the world. And so they have that view of God. Then you have people that, you know, they might believe in God, but they think he's this teddy bear. He's just nice and whatnot. But it's like you're not reading your Bible. It's, this guy was rough, and when he when he, when he when he caused judgment, it was harsh judgment. And he made sure people knew that he was mad. And in a scene like this, there's people watching. You have Samuel, the prophet Samuel, oh Samuel, the nice guy, whatever, whatever. He's probably like you know. I don't think they've ever seen him be violent or something like that. He takes the sword and did what Saul couldn't do out of greed and weakness. And he cut Agag to pieces in front of everyone. Not for to prove some point to them, but before God saying, look, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you want. I'll follow you. I want you to know that I'm obedient and that I regard you as king. 
Samuel's a real nigga, man. He's a real one. Um, he cut that hole to pieces. And listen, man. God has every right to declare this sort of judgment. It's his right as the sovereign king of the universe. He made all this. He made all this. And it's his right. I don't know if anyone can stand there and say, you can't do that. You can't. It's like, what? he can do what he wants. But also it's like, Agag was evil. Uh, well, Samuel said to him, as you have made uh, people motherless or something like that, he basically said, I'm going to kill you because you've killed other people. Agag wasn't some innocent person this guy was the king of an evil nation he was the evil king of an evil nation and he got what was coming to him um we don't do things that way anymore things have changed as the introduction of of jesus christ introduced a new covenant a new way of doing things but um yeah just to, to let you know what, what to break down how severe that scene was. Where is this where is this fool? Aga comes out like okay, surely the bitterness of death has passed. And then Samuel, what does he say? As your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. Samuel is the best quote though. This guy just spits bars and he killed him. Join these people in the grave. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. Sad man. Sad, sad, sad. Sad, sad, sad. Damn sad. It's the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 So yeah, man. God values obedience more than anything. Um, we're imperfect people. We'll fuck up from time to time. But it's like, when he gives you clear directives, man, you should follow. You should follow. Like, soul is just so arrogant um so this story gets deeper like because of this decision that Saul made to not follow God's directives all the way through we're gonna see the ripple effect of, like it's gonna have real life consequences it's gonna get very interesting it's gonna get very interesting um and yeah you'll see but it's like when God says that, he says it for a reason. He knows. He has the divine foresight and he, there's reasons for everything. So it's like when he tell when he's telling the homie, do this, he's telling him for a reason. People don't listen, you don't listen. Um so yeah man. I think the moral of the story is like an obedient spirit. Is better than like a, a performative one. When, when you're out here making grand gestures and, and trying to prove how good you are and you're virtue signaling, you're doing all this stupid shit, it doesn't mean as much as someone who just actually does what they're told and does the work and has a willing spirit to do what's right in God's eyes. That means more than any, that means more than anything else um and i think people have an arrogance sometimes that they 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 accumulate through their deeds oh even if we apply to our modern context like you've, you've donated to this charity you've, you've done this for this person and you've done this for that group and yada 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 you start to feel very self-righteous like <laughs> you, you you get these grand ideas about yourself you walk around like you're the shit and you're the bee's knees and it's like you're not like you must never forget 
all your shortcomings and all your iniquities and you must never forget your blessings and that you aren't responsible for your own blessing like like someone else blessed you and god blessed you and god established you and you should always give thanks and, and and recognize that without the people in your life and without god you wouldn't be anything and that's what keeps you humble but when you like so and you start like celebrating yourself and erecting monuments for yourself and you want people to champion you and worship you and all this oh my god the sin of arrogance man what does it say what does Samuel say on your spitting bars arrogance like the evil of idolatry yeah Arrogance is like the evil of idolatry because it's like you're literally becoming your own God. Mm, deep. You're viewing yourself as God in that moment. It's like, I'm the shit. I'm, I'm. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You're not. But yeah. Um, the story just gets, it gets more interesting. I, uh, this so much. So much. But this mistake Saul made of sparing the king and not not doing a thorough job, not doing the entire job he was tasked with doing, it's going to bite him in the ass very soon. You'll see. It's going to have ripple effects. And I'm very excited to share that with you. But we'll save that for the next... Um, well, you'll see as the, 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 as the book unfolds. David's coming up. King David. Great historical figure. Um, he's going to be popping up very soon so I'm looking forward to that as well uh, anyway let's pray and get out of here dear God thank you for this individual thank you for blessing them and keeping them safe and making them whole and unique and you guide them on a path a good path that helps them fulfill their potential and be the best version of themselves the kindest version the most sincere version the most honest version the most empowered version of themselves and you've imbued them with so much potential and you love them and you want the best for them and they have a good life ahead of them i think they wake up every morning with things to look forward to and things to be thankful for that they're happy and at peace good health long life and happiness over this individual over their friends and family over everyone they care about they're doing well and it's a daily process of becoming better and and establishing a life of peace and, and happiness so i think that every day is a new day to, to work towards all that and there's grace in that regard in your mind and i pray in jesus i pray amen 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 um <laughs> i really be reading my bible and say it's more really i wonder if people like it i'm sure some of you like it i hope you're learning as well anyway i'll see you